Hello everyone, this is Shine Kelly. I am the CEO and co-founder of Unite. And I am sitting here in my Tesla at 2.53 a.m. on whatever day it is, uh, sometime in January in 2021. And I am wanting to share a little bit about the vision for Unite and what we're doing and, and why we're doing it. Um, so I'm a little bit of a late bird. It's funny, I, I, I've, I've tried many, many different ways and I always seem to end up going to bed around, you know, 5 a.m. It's just, it's just where my body likes to, likes to sleep. And so it's funny, that's why, that, to me, this is kind of my, my creative time. Um, gosh, so Unite, well, Unite really started as a, a part of, a part of my life that I wanted to, to bring into the world more. So my father, uh, got diagnosed with cancer when I was 12. He died when I was 15. During that time, he really, um, as soon as he knew he was going to die, he, he sort of became very focused on doing his his great work like doing what he loved and doing uh basically what had been hard for him to do for the other part of his life um and what i took from that is that don't wait until you're <laughs> dying uh to do what you love because that's what you'll want to do when when you know you're go when you know you're gonna go and so that that sort of helped me have that entrepreneurial focus of of really wanting to do what felt exciting for me and what was what was the the fun thing and then also through that my mom became very depressed and and uh, just lots of lots of emotional um stuff as you would imagine uh, losing your your life partner at uh, 17 years and and so she had a really rough time with it and uh, that that whole situation what it really taught me was that it was so important. Like, I think, I feel like my dad had, had, uh, cancer and passed away, um, because of what he had, the emotional stuff that had sort of not been fixed in his life or he hadn't come to terms with it or he hadn't figured out not so much about fixing the emotional stuff, but he hadn't figured out how to stay in his in, in harmony and in, in alignment and he was doing things that he didn't want to be doing and he was feeling frustrated and struggling and and so it manifested in this in this disease is my belief and I listen to a lot of Abraham Hicks and that sort of that's that's where that's where a lot of these things come from is just that our thoughts create our reality and that everything is everything is is vibration it is emotion and that we are we are in control we whatever we feel we attract and, and that's it. And so I, I love that idea. I feel like you sort of have to pick. It's like either everything is random and, and everyone, you know, anyone can hurt you at any time and anything can happen at any time. And it's all, it's all risky. And I feel like that's why, why a lot of people live the way they live and a lot of countries live the way they live and go to war and all those things. And then the other way to look at it is that everybody is completely empowered and at choice and in charge of how they feel, which then brings to them a vibrational match of whatever they're feeling. And so I, I choose that one. I feel like that is true for me and, and true for a lot of people I know. So um, I feel like Unite for me became this. So d I guess during that time with my, with my family, um, I realized that I really wanted to find a way to support more happiness in the world and to, to bring together more things that, that bring people joy. And I started to look at all the problems in the world and see that the, you know, there was homelessness and hunger and all these things. And what became clearer and clearer is that when people are really happy, like really happy, like consistently high vibing very happy there's a thing that happens where great ideas are you're in the receiving mode of great ideas and so solutions to problems sort of show up synchronicities support from 
the the um, people call it the universe. I, I guess that's what I would call it is the universe, but it's really like collaborative components. So like people will be inspired to rendezvous with you and to leave their house just at the right time to like see you at the grocery store and have this piece of the puzzle and, and this idea that sparks something in you with the solution or whatever. But there's some magic that happens when people are happy. And so I feel like if everybody was consistently more in harmony with themselves and more happy and doing what they loved and just in, in every moment being in that zone of happiness, then there would be peace on earth and no one would be hungry and it would, there are very way less. It would just be a much, a much nicer, a much nicer thing. And it's already pretty good. I mean, there's so much data of how good it is and how many people are doing so good. I love the Peter Diamandis uh, abundance video all about that, that there's just so, it's just, it's just absurd, the level of awesomeness that is happening right now on every level. Like, it's just better than it's ever been by far and getting better and anything that's a problem we have a solution for and it's just going to be the best ever. And so that's where, that's my worldview is that we're doing so good and we're going to figure this all out and it's going to be awesome and it's just, there's nothing to worry about and all we have to do is just feel good and be happy and the world will sort itself out. Things will will sort of miraculously manifest around us that will make everything really easy. And so that's that's definitely, that feels, <laughs> that feels easy, it feels fun. Um, and so Unite really came out of this idea of like, so I know that I want to, number one, find a way, I was thinking like, how can I help bring happiness into the world? And not just like one-on-one -on -one or, you know, even like a Tony Robbins style happiness where it's, you know, you're reaching millions, if not billions of people, but you know, maybe for short times. And I was like, I really want to figure out a way to really, like, s happiness at scale. Like, how does that work? And uh, at the time, I was a musician and also thinking about life coaching and different things. And so I was just playing with those ideas. And what ended up happening over a, s a series of, uh, of, of time, days, weeks, months, years, is that this these visions and these opportunities and these synchronicities and, and, and ideas started to form. And I started to see the basics of sort of this global organization, this company. And I was learning about entrepreneurship and business. And, and so I, I began really seeing the, the potential of having a company that could play with the ranks of Google and Facebook and whatever, but was focused on happiness and was focused on well-being and, and harmony, inner harmony which would lead to outer harmony and, and all the things that come along with that. So many moving pieces, but just imagine if, if Facebook and Google and big companies like that, if their only focus was on how to elevate human consciousness and make people feel the best ever and support, you know, happiness and harmony and well-being and community and all these things. And we started a an events company, my partner and I, Crystal, we met and, and basically met through, through an events company that I was working with and then started our own company and went on to run over a hundred events over the last uh, five years. And, um, you know, did, we did the entrepreneur thing. We, we, I went from sort of not really having a clear career path and knowing what I wanted to, you know, basically like being able to survive on doing what I loved and, and figuring it out and just, you know, bootstrapping. And it's, it was really fun and it was really, really awesome. We, we learned a lot. It was our first kind of dive into entrepreneurship. And then as there had always been this idea for a technology company and it, it, it started with this idea of, um, at the time, I think it was before smartphones, and so we just had these flip phones. And I, I remember thinking, oh, it'd be interesting if you could just call a number and they would connect you with a coach. And that coach could be a specific type. And and you they could be rated and they could be like online and just charge you by the minute and kind of like a 1-900 number, but for, for coaching. 
and uh, kind of like a suicide line, but more uh, not not uh, not a uh, not a crisis line, and uh, and just like a pay by the minute or pay by the whatever. And so I was thinking that'd be an interesting idea, and and that eventually grew into this idea of like, ooh, what if we could get all the wellness practitioners and events, uplifting events and eco sustainable wellness products and all that stuff what if we could get all that stuff in one place and then it could people could could rate it against each other and 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 just see the best stuff and we could get really really specific and so then i thought it would be interesting to 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 start to to really work on personalization and at this time we were running events and neither one neither crystal my partner or i are really interested in learning the facebook marketing algorithm ad platform thing it just didn't feel exciting or interesting to us at the time and i know that we can figure it out and we're very both real smart and it's it's easy but i feel like there was a theme that we were seeing that like not a lot of we weren't super excited and a lot of the businesses we knew and people we knew in business were just weren't excited about learning about ads and running ads on these platforms and so we began thinking like, hmm, you know, Google and Facebook could probably have a lot of information about all of us. They could probably do a really good job of selling out our events for us. And I'd happily give them like, you know, up to like a lot, like a lot of it, like maybe half, I don't know, but a lot of money. I would, I would eat because that's the biggest job is just getting people in the door. If you, if you knew you could just sell out, like, pff, dude, take, take it, take, take the money. Like it's all good. And so I was thinking like, oh man, this is really interesting. Like what if that existed for masseuses or energy healers or dance classes or whatever, um, you know, workshops, anything. And, and I was like, oh, this is so interesting because that would really help a lot of people to not have to worry so much about the marketing and the, the, the sales part of it. And that if people could just literally show up and I and then we experienced Airbnb and we, we got on their platform and used it and it was like it was so easy and we made like I don't know a lot of money over a summer and it was just so lovely and it's so easy and we didn't have to do anything to sort of get people to rent our place it was just you just put your place up there and it just <laughs> sold out and you know all your your only job was to make sure that the the, the um, you, you were it was really clear what it was and that you communicated with people but they did the work of finding the people for you you didn't have to market it and then they took a percentage and super happy to pay that i think it was you know whatever like 15 percent or something 12 percent and it's like we, we just did no work bare like basically to just get a bunch of people to come in and and pay money to stay in our empty basement so okay yeah definitely take 12 percent or whatever and so that became really interesting. And I was like, hmm, like why hasn't anyone built this but for like wellness, product services, and events? And that just started to percolate. And so basically we things 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 started to crystallize. And we're like, oh, okay, like this needs to happen. And at some point in there we thought about um, building a, a Unite Center, a physical space that would be epic. Uh, spot I'll tell you about more of that later maybe but um decided it wasn't the right timing and thank god you know covid would have been a, a, a nightmare and uh it still still is a rough time for a lot of people god bless us all and uh <laughs> I know we'll figure it out and um so I think so the next phase is that we we got clear that now is the time we need to we want to start building we want to start building this platform and so we just said okay we finished our new year's event in 2020 Jan january 1st 2020 we finished it we cleaned it all up and then we're like okay what's next and we thought of doing a bunch of events and we were about to like you know do a whole series of big events where we'd rent out these beautiful places and put deposits down on spots and at some point I just said you know what we need a really good reason not to work on the tech platform and this was in like mid-January so before anything hit North America and, and I just 
I just got this, I just got this idea. Like, you know what? Like, it's really, it really makes sense to work on this tech platform. And there's nothing that that's. I'm, I'm sitting in uh, in the Tesla. That's sometimes it likes to speak. And I was like, if we don't do this, there needs to be a really good reason because it's like, this is this is sort of in our in our idea the the vision for unite is to have technology but also media and and events and spaces and that the technology is kind of like the engine behind it it's the it's what will sell out the events and fill up the spaces and distribute the tech uh, or the media and so so i'm like you know what this is sort of like the base of all of this and if we can build this really well the rest of it's easy like it, you can just sell out your events and do all that stuff. So, so it, it just came to that. It's like, do we have a good reason not to do this? No. Okay. So we're, we're going to focus purely on just building this tech platform. And so literally like February, we were sort of building it. And then March, boom, things hit with the pandemic. We, uh, we met our technology team right before then. And we worked with them to sort of build a plan. And we started building in June, I believe. And, um, we're just about to launch our beta. We have had five or six private beta tests and so far so great. And, and it's just, it's the best ever and super excited to, to kind of get, get things to that, to that next level. Mm, and yeah, let's see. So right now the platform consists of the love feed, which is basically a positive news feed. And the goal is for everything that people share on there to, uh, to be uplifting and supportive and, and something that you think would help other people feel good and that helps you feel good. And the idea behind the love feed is to, to sort of have a, a social media network that's, that's sharing good news and sharing happy, uplifting things. And that it's more of a personal growth site than a news network. Uh, sort of where, you know, Twitter and Facebook can, uh, can kind of get into that world of like sharing the facts and the news and the, the Trumps and the vaccines and the viruses. And it's like, okay, let's just go into, uh, you know, conspiracy stuff. I'm like, okay, let's just, what about focusing more on things that help uplift people that, that are going well, that, that are easy, that feel good to people. Cause there's enough room for all that, all the, all the other stuff. There's lots of spaces to share everything else. So. But there's no like, there's no like, you know, really great positive social network where everyone's encouraged to share uplifting stuff. So that's the love feed and a really interesting feature that we're thinking about building, which I think will be the next thing is a check-in and we might call it path to joy. We're, we're deciding, but so imagine you log in and right away there's a pop-up and it asks you how you're feeling and you have, I feel like crap. I feel bad. I feel okay. I feel good. I feel amazing. And those are your five choices, kind of like a five star. And so you pick your, you pick your spot and say you're feeling amazing. And then you start scrolling and each uh, post has a, has a five, a five, uh, five emotion check-in and it doesn't relay any information to the actual poster or the, the author of the post. It's more for you to just check in about how you're feeling uh, and to rate these posts not sort of on their own, but relative to how you were feeling before. And so uh, if you don't move a full star uh, in either direction, and so you're just sort of still, if, if so say I started out feeling great and I'm still feeling great, then I could just press a little better or worse. So it's like, oh, I'm still feeling great. And that post made me feel a little bit better. Still feeling great. Oh, that was a little bit lower vibe, but I'm still feeling great. And then when you shift from feeling great to feeling good or feeling great, maybe unlock a super secret six star feeling the best ever, then you would click the, the thing. And so it's, it's a way to sort of track content. And, uh, and then basically what it can do is it can, we can see like, okay, so people who feel like crap, <laughs> what, what the people who go from crap to good, 
they like these types of posts. And then we can pinpoint the exact posts because people are checking in per post. And we can say, okay, this post is really great for people who are feeling like crap because it gets them to feeling like less crap. And then this post is really great for people who are feeling like bad and less crap, but to get them to feeling okay. And then these posts are great for people who feel okay to get them to feel good. And then great. And so it's going to be really interesting. And then we can do the same thing with product services and events. So like this masseuse is really great when you're feeling really low. But the people who are feeling really good maybe don't like them as much, whatever. So it's going to be really interesting to get this, this, these insights and this data. And a, a big thing about the site is that we really want it to be all uh, completely transparent. And so you control what you see and you can change it. So anything that you're seeing on your feed, you have asked for it in some way. You've, you've, you've said, I want these tags or your, your, your filters are sort of open to it and that you can basically change it if you don't like it. And you can, you can say what you want and, and be, be in total control of, of what you're seeing. And of course there's going to be, you know, nuances to that I don't know exactly how it's all gonna work and I'm sure there will be moments when people feel like oh there why did I see this it's not what I want but that's the intention is that you're that it's it's very much that if you see something that you don't like that you should be able to trace it back to something that you asked for and that you said that you wanted or that you were open to and that you can then change that and you can refine it and say oh actually I don't like that or I don't like this person's version of that or whatever so that's that's the love feed. And then right now that uh, check-in feature is not built, but the love feed is. And then we have profiles, business and personal profiles. So you can post as a business, comment as a business or a personal uh, member. And then you can fill out your profile. And on the profile, there's the standard about stuff. And then you have your interests, which are your, your tags. And so your tags will sort of help to curate the love feed for you for the first little bit. And that'll sort of be the the, uh, the the general one of the the algorithms that you can use is is just um, creating sort of a, a list of tags that are sort of you know general terms like yoga and wellness and spirituality and health and mental health and entrepreneurship and business and whatever, and then th you'll see those posts first, and then you'll see um, under that you'll be able to pick between most recent, most engagement. And uh, new users, I think, are like the three ways. And then you can also um, only see people's favorites. So we're thinking that instead of having a five-star rating system, we're just going to have favorites. And that's what I think uh, Nextdoor is doing. And so that helps to clarify. Because I was like, hmm, do you really care if someone rates something a three or a four-star? Like, wouldn't you rather just know everybody's five-star stuff? And then you can kind of um, just see what is the best stuff and, and that way you're also getting out of like the whole negative review cycle and it's like eh, if someone's just not getting a lot of favorites then that's a good that's a sign that they're not you know that good and you don't need to like bash them with one stars and so it's really interesting or maybe they're just new it'll be interesting i don't know it'll be interesting to see so we'll figure that there's there's nuances there we don't know yet how we're going to do it but we want to have this thing called favorites where you can favorite a post you can favorite a product service event business even a person, um, which I don't think we'll have that be public, uh, just to keep it, to keep it, I don't think people would want to do that, but it's going to be really interesting because if you favorite all those things, then you can be matched up with other people who have similar favorites. So if you have a friend who's one of your favorites and another person has that same friend who's one of their favorites, then potentially a, a, another friend who's person A's favorite might be a person B's favorite too, or someone that they would want to meet. And if they don't know them, maybe the site could then say, hey, you should meet this person. And if you really love a dish at a restaurant and someone else really loves that dish, maybe then they, you guys should know what each other loves at other restaurants that you haven't been to. So it's going to be really interesting. We're calling that one Taste Profiles. We haven't built that either, but that's one of the next features that we're thinking of. And, um, so that's the basics of it. And then we've got our appreciations, which is basically just 
good, easy, good feeling things that you appreciate about the world that you can put into a, a feed, uh, your own feed, and other people can look at it too if you want, and you can make it private if you want to. And then that's just something that you can just look at and be like, oh, this is this is something that I, this is something that I appreciate and whatever, whatever. And then um, you have your your favorites on your profile, and you can have you can sort you know everything, products, services, events, asks and offers. Those are that's a thing that we're gonna do. So you can ask for advice or support or or specific things or like a you know physical stuff where you can offer the same thing like i have a free this or i have i'm offering this or whatever and so the asks and the offers are going to be really interesting and then we have our uh our vision board which is going to be more things that you're creating like specific um beautiful new houses that you want to live in or a new partner that you're manifesting or a new car or whatever and it it might not be something that you would put on your appreciation board because it might have a bit more it's something that you're creating so it might have a bit more resistance or like something that you're just striving towards so it's just like a different a different energy than i see the appreciations being more like you know nature and puppies and kittens and like easy good feeling things and it's something that you would kind of go to when you're not feeling the best and then the vision board would be something that you go to when you're really feeling good and then you'd sort of be in that manifesting mode and just like envisioning yourself in your new house and your new car and i'm sure there'd be some crossover and you can put things in both and then um i think that's it for the, the features right now um yeah but it'll be super interesting to see what what comes next so I think I'm going to leave that there and this, so that is the, the, the MVP, the minimum viable product, uh, for Unite is, uh, is, is this, this next phase. And we're going to be doing some testing, some beta testing with, uh, some of our, our kind of core community and then rolling it out in maybe the same way that Clubhouse is doing it where it's invite only. And so you sort of get invites based on your, activity on the site and uh, and then it sort of grows slowly and organically so that we can really uh, customize it and make it the best ever and it also sort of creates this fun um, this fun sort of experience for people getting to to sort of be early users and set the tone and build have that that energy and that core community and it'll be really interesting just to see how that how that all unfolds in general bing um yeah, I think that's it for now. Maybe I'll do another one on like, on the vision of of some of the future features and on the spaces and and the different aspects of the tech and media and events. But I think for now that's uh, that feels good. So so much love, everyone. Hope you're doing amazing. Let us know how we can support. One of my favorite things is connecting people and just making introductions and, and making connections. So if there's anything we can do, let us know. So much love. We'll talk soon.